The church of God say amen again. Listen, I, I was sitting there, I was seeing myself, man, if I was not the pastor already, and if I wasn't a member of First Church, I would join this church. Come on, say amen, somebody. I promise you, I'll join this church. Man, God's been so good to us. Come on, stand to your feet, stand to your feet as we go to the Word of God today. Y'all pray for me. My, my, I'm on the clock today. Pray for me on the clock today. That was your chance to say, Pastor, take your time, but you didn't. You, you didn't say it. We got to go. We got to go. I, I want to thank Joy and Pastor Adams once again for their creative genius. Can you say amen today? We in the ship. Come on, say amen. I praise God for that. I praise God for that. Are you ready for the word of God today? Now, God, we ask in the name of Jesus. Lord, I'm asking now that you would indeed think through my mind. Speak through my vocal cords. God, I've heard you all week long, and I pray, oh God, today that what you have said to me in private, that you will now declare publicly to your people. I pray, oh God, that you will bless not only this word, God, but bless those who find themselves in the midst of a storm right now. God, have your way. And we leave this place, and we leave better because we've been in your presence. For I ask it in Jesus' name. Come on, say amen and amen. Take your Bibles right now, your Bibles, your devices, your tablets, your phones, whatever you may have. And I invite you to go back with me to the book of Jonah right now, the book of Jonah. And I'm going to begin reading today at verse number three. Last week we preached verse number one, two, and three. Today I pick it up at verse number three and preach through verse 10 on today with your prayers. Jonah chapter number one and beginning at verse number three. When you have it, come on, say amen. amen. The word of the Lord reads, the Bible says, but Jonah rose up to flee unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. And he went down to Joppa and he found a ship going to Tarshish to pay the fare thereof and went down into it to go with them unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. Verse number four, the Bible says, but, somebody shout but. But the Lord sent out a great wind into the sea. And there was a mighty tempest in the sea so that the ship was like to be broken. Oh, God, speak to us. Verse 5. Then the mariners were afraid and cried every man unto his God, lowercase g, <laughs> and cast forth the wares that were in the ship into the sea to lighten it up them. But Jonah was gone what direction? Down into the sides of the ship. He lay and was fast asleep. Have mercy. So the shipmaster came to him and said unto him, What meaneth thou, O sleeper? Arise. This is the second time somebody got told Jonah to get up. Arise, call upon thy capital G God. If so be that God will think upon us that we perish not. And they said, every one to his fellow, come and let us cast lots, that we may know for whose cause this evil is come upon us. So they cast lots, and it fell upon who? Upon Jonah. Verse 8, then said they, tell us, we pray thee, for whose cause is this evil upon us? What is thy occupation? <laughs> And whence cometh thou? What is thy country? And who are thou people? And Jonah now gets real holy and he says unto them, I am a Hebrew. And I fear the Lord, the God of heaven, which has made the sea and the dry land. I'm glad he knows that. Verse 10, last verse. Then were the men exceedingly afraid and said unto him, Why have thou done this? For the men knew that he had fled from the presence of the Lord because he had told them. I want to preach just for a few moments today with your prayers on the subject entitled, Help, I'm in a storm. Help, I'm in a storm. 
I need y'all to help me preach for some for just a few moments right now. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, oh neighbor, I've been in a storm. Turn to one more, turn to one more, I'm done. Turn to one more and say, neighbor, oh neighbor, the storm is passing over. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Come on, give God some praise in the sanctuary this morning. Amen. Amen. Help, I'm in a storm. Have you been there before? Have you ever had the storms of life come your way? Have you ever been so stormed out that you didn't even know whether it was night or it was day? Have you ever talked to me, somebody woke up in the morning and been so stressed? Been so overwhelmed that, that you pulled the covers back over your head and you just wish that the day would pass you by. Have, have you ever wished that you could just sleep your storms away? Do I have any real folk in the house today? Have you ever been in the storm? Have, have you ever wanted to holler in the midst of your storm? God, help me preach this thing today. Have you ever been in a situation, uh, I've been there, where you've gone to the grocery store and you have been so overwhelmed, you've been tripping, you've been thinking about stuff, you go to the grocery store, you went in, came out, and you didn't even remember parking your car. I don't have no real folk in the house today. You was like, man, I don't even know where that bad boy is. Come on, somebody. You didn't have the key fob to tell the, the, the horn. You was like, I'm lost. Hey, have you, I'm talking for real. Have you ever been so stressed that you pumped your gas and then drove off with the gas tank with the gas nuzzle still in your, y'all ain't talking to me today. I, I went to the gas station so overwhelmed thinking about stuff, and I drove off with a gas tank. Don't tell nobody with that thing still attached to my car. I went back, and I said, I'm sorry, and I said, that's all right. But that's what stress will do. That's what being overwhelmed will do. Somebody once said that in life, either you are going into a storm, coming out of a storm, or about to go through another storm. Do I have a witness, somebody? But it's all about how you handle the storms of your life. You see, my brothers and my sisters, everybody goes through some storms in their life. God, I want to preach this thing today. Everybody goes through some challenging moments in your life. As long as you have breath in your body, do I have a witness? As long as you have breath, Storms will come your way. Dark clouds will form and lightning will flash and thunder will clap. Rain will be all around you. Everybody goes through some storms in this life. Matter of fact, the Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 4, check out the text, 1 Peter chapter 4, and beginning at verse number 12 and 13, it was Peter that said these words. Peter said, Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trials which is to try you as some strange thing happening unto you. In other words, Peter is like, listen, y'all, the things that you've gone through, somebody else has gone through them as well. The things that have weighed you down, somebody else has also been weighed down by the same thing. Matter of fact, as long as you are a child of the living God, the devil will bring trials your way. I don't have a witness in this place today. As long as you want to live right for God, some hell will come your way. Do I have a witness, somebody? Just when you least expected it, just when everything was going well, just when you was living life like it was golden, 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 some hell came your way. The Bible says don't think it's strange when you are going through your fiery trial because fire is meant to refine us. And if fire is meant to, y'all didn't say amen right there, fire is meant to refine us and fire is meant to purify us. And if we're going to be children of God, everybody has to go through some fire every now and then. 
But, but I can't leave you alone at verse number 12 because verse 13, the Bible says, but when you're going through your trials, it says, but, somebody say, but, uh, rejoice. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm not trying to rejoice when I'm going through it. I got two real people in the house today. I'm not trying to rejoice when I feel as if, God, what is going on? No. When I'm going through it, I just need somebody to pray for me every now and then. <laughs> when I'm going through I just need somebody to come by and give me an encouraging word. The Bible says, but rejoice. For in so much as you are partakers of Christ's suffering, that when his glory shall be revealed, you may be glad with exceeding joy. Who says amen? Somebody can testify today that you've been through some fiery trials in your life. Somebody can testify today that, Pastor Lee, I've been in the midst of a storm before. Somebody who keeps it 100 today can testify, Doc, I'm in a storm right now. I'm looking for some real help right there. I'm in a storm right now. Help, I'm in a storm right now. That song is so true that though the storms keep on raging in my life, and sometimes it's hard to tell the night from day, dun, 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 y'all don't help me. Somebody can testify, Pastor Lee, I've been through several storms in my life. My daddy died. My mama died. My children have been sick. I've been in financial trouble. I've been bankrupt. I've been over my head. I, I felt like I couldn't get up. I felt like every day I turned around, there was a new trial. Every time I looked around, watch the text, because sometimes you look around and you say, God, why are the wicked being so blessed while I'm trying to serve you and I'm going through hell? Do I have a real witness in the house today? Okay, y'all won't keep it real. I'll keep it real. I'm like, man, them NBA players are going a max contract with $250 million for four years. And I'm saying, God, I'm trying to do your will. Can I just get 10%? Y'all don't help me preach that thing today. I'm like, God, they're using this stuff for damnable stuff. God, I want to bless somebody. Why do the wicked flourish while the righteous sometimes go through it? Everybody goes through some storms, but, but here's the thing. Somebody can also testify and say, listen, Pastor Lee, I've been through some storms, but my God has brought me out of every single storm that I've been through, and now I am better. Wait a minute. Didn't Marvin Sapp say it well when he said, never could have made it, never would have made it without you. I would have lost it all. But now I see, come on somebody, that he was there for me. Do I have a witness in this house today? I feel happy right there. And now I can say, never would have made it. Never could have made it without you. Yo, my favorite part of that song, Betty, is I'm stronger. Hey, I felt my help right there. I'm stronger. I'm wiser. I'm better. Oh, so much better when I look back all that he's brought me through. And now I can see you're the one I held on to. I never would have made it without you. Listen, I don't have long today, but the first thing in the text that I need for you to understand today is that, number one, God is in the midst of every single storm. Oh, you didn't believe what I just said right there. I'm in Jonah right now. I need for somebody to understand, especially somebody who is going through a storm right now, that your God, our God, the Creator God, is in the midst of every single storm in your life. Can I, can I show you from the Bible, y'all, that, that God specializes in storms? 
I, I could walk through from, from, the to, from the time of Noah all the way to the New Testament that there was never a storm that God did not show up in. That there was all, even when Jesus was in the boat and a storm came his way, my Jesus was able to stand up. Y'all won't check out the scene, but Jesus said, shut up to that storm that was coming in that area. He's always in the midst of storms. Matter of fact, the Bible, and let's go Bible in, in, in Psalm 46, one of my favorite Psalms, Psalm 46, write it down. I don't have long. Psalm 46 and verse 1, the Bible says, the Bible says, Psalm 46 and verse 1, nobody's writing it down. <laughs> Y'all going to play the replay. That's cool. Here it is. God is our refuge and strength. A very, check out the text. It didn't say past, and it didn't say future. But the Bible says that our God is a refuge, and he's a strength. He's a very present help in every storm, in every trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. Though the earth be removed, though the mountains be carried into the, into the midst of the sea, Though the waters will roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof. Oh, here's the transition, verse 4. There is a river. The streams whereof shall make glad the city of God. The holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High God. Verse 5 says, God is in the midst of her Wait a minute. I know why y'all didn't say amen because y'all think that that's somewhere back then. No, God is saying God is in the midst of you right now. And she that is you shall not be moved. For God shall do what everybody shall help you. And how will God help you? He'll help you right early. <laughs> that's old school right here. Anybody know that God will help you right early? When you call upon his name, he knows how to help you right early. But, but I don't need y'all to leave Psalm 46. I'm, I got to get a Jonah, but Psalm 46, verse 10, in the midst of your storm, in the midst of the hellish stuff that we go through, the psalmist has enough nerve to tell us, be still. I got to pause right there because that's where God had me for somebody today. Somebody that's trying to figure it out. Let me tell you something, y'all. The secret things belong to God. Job did not know why he was going through the hell that he was going through. But sometimes you just got to be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the who? Heathen. Don't miss that part. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. God is in the midst of every single storm, whether your storm is financial, hmm? whether your storm is relational, whether your storm is occupational, whether your storm is spiritual, emotional, mental, or is in your own health, or check out the text, or even if you brought the storm upon yourself. God is still in the midst of your storm. God told his prophet Jonah. He said, brother, get up. Which messes with me in the text because it opens up like that, Brother McClurry. It opens up with God saying, brother, get up. And I got a problem, man, because why is Jonah chilling when he should be doing ministry? Well, why does God got to tell his man to get up and do something? Shouldn't it be natural for us to do the work of God? But God says, Jonah, get up and, and get up and go to Nineveh. But instead, you know the text, I preached that part last week. Jonah goes and he flees to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. Now, I, I got to show you all because let me tell you something. When I studied the word, man, I got so excited, Pastor Miller. I started jumping out of my seat. I want, you to, I want to put this on the screen right now. Can I teach the word for one minute right now more? He, here it is on, on the screen right now. God said go, the map. God said go to, to, to Nineveh. Check out where Nineveh is, right? 
Now, 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 Jonah is from uh, Gath Hifar, which is 550 miles from Nineveh. God, God, come, 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 come. God said, go to Nineveh, which is just from here to Chicago. Y'all missed all of that thing right there. It's in reverse. Come on, God. To my house from right here is 576 miles. Y'all ain't saying nothing right here. God, God said, go to Nineveh, which was supposed to be 550 miles. But the Bible says that Jonah, on the screen again, the Bible says that Jonah says, nope, I'm going down. And when he goes down, he keeps on going down. Are y'all hearing the word today? And when Jonah goes down, he pays a fare. Because I told you last week, how many times have you paid some stupid money for some stupid stuff? Oh, I know y'all too holy to get with me this early in the sermon right now, but how many of y'all pay some stupid money for some stupid stuff? And I don't need to name your stuff, but you know that you have cashed out. God, I feel like preaching long today, but I can't. 7-Eleven. Bottle this, girl that. Come on, somebody. Y'all ain't saying nothing in this place today. Jonah, 550 miles, go and do my mission. But Jonah instead goes down all the way to Miami, Florida. And instead of being obedient now, watch the text right. He jumps on a ship. Somebody say ship. He jumps on a ship. And now Jonah has made up his mind that he's going to go 2,500 miles in the opposite direction. Now, for some of y'all that ain't saying nothing, but for me, I Googled that bad boy in my study this week. And I found out that from Huntsville to Los Angeles, it's only 2,000 miles. And by car. <laughs> it'll take you about 30 some hours by car. Can you imagine the craziness of this prophet that he said, I'm going to take a boat? Now, when God told him to go to Nineveh, he was already stubborn. When God said, go to Nineveh, he said, no, I'm going down. He paid a fare to go down. Because whenever you live, try to leave God, you're always going down. I, I got to come for you real quick. Don't stop saying amen. When, whenever you are disobedient to God, you're always going down. Whenever God told you, don't mess with him. And you mess with him? Why y'all stop saying amen? When God said, don't date her, she ain't no good. All of my amens have been withdrawn today. I brought my own today. I got one in my pocket. Amen. Whenever you are disobedient to God, you're always going down. And when you go down, you will experience the consequences of going down, which in which in Clues, ah, the hand of God and all kind of stuff the devil has for you as well. And I'm tripping because the prophet would rather go 2,500 miles in the opposite direction because he can't stand the Ninevites. Oh, pastor, you better preach that thing today. But the Bible says that, that Jonah tries to outrun God. He, he, he thinks that them folk get on the last nerves. Hey, have you ever been there before? Have you ever had, anybody ever had somebody get on your last nerve? Now, I'm going to say something right now, and it's okay, because we in church, we're going to keep it 100, because that's how I always do it. Anybody in church ever get on your last? <laughs> I know, y'all so mad at me right now. 
Anybody on your pew ever get this kingdom? <laughs> God said, go, but Jonah sat down. And he went the opposite direction, trying to run from God. Now, when I did my study, Pastor uh, Taylor, I, the, the exegetical study of this text, I keep on finding out that not only does it go down, but the text keeps on saying that he goes from the presence of God. But I need for somebody to know whether you are a young person, whether you're an older person, or whether you've been in church for 75 years, you can't run boo from God. You can't run from God. Can I say it one more time? You can try to run from the church. You can try to run because somebody hurts you in the church. You can try to run from not showing back up at the pandemic. But I want to tell somebody today that you can never outrun the Spirit of God. See, see, David said in Psalm 39, y'all know that text, Psalm 39? Psalm 39, verse 7 and 8, David said, Whether shall I go from my spirit? And where shall I flee from your presence? He said, if I, if I ascend into heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. David was saying, God, if I, no matter where I go, I can't shake you. When, when I tried to get away from you, God, you kept on running after me. And uh, you can't shake God. Matter of fact, when I told God I am not going into ministry, I feel like a Jonah. I told God, God, I am not trying to go to Oakwood. Everybody their mama went to Oakwood. I'm, I'm going to give you one more. Now, this is a true story. We were at the campgrounds at Lake Region, my home conference, Lake Region campgrounds. And two of my favorite, my, my, my boys, Dwayne Duncombe and Marlon Reed, uh, we was working on the campground, and, and they said, Will, would you ever, we were new in ministry 20 years ago. We were new in ministry, and, and they said, Will, would you ever want to go back to Huntsville and pastor? And I was quick at the draw. I said, ain't no way. I ain't ever. Go. We had graduated from Oakwood. We were so happy to graduate, but we was like, man, Huntsville, mm-mm, no, mm-mm, no. We like Huntsville for school, but we was like, no, nah, we ain't going back. And could y'all believe the Lord has a sense of, y'all ain't saying nothing in this place today. When Elder Jones called me, I was like, no, the devil is alive. No, I ain't going. Because your plans don't always match up with God's plans. And, and God's thoughts are not always your thoughts. And, and God's ways are not always our ways. But God knows what he's doing. And can I finish my story? I'm so happy to be the pastor at First Seven-Day Adventist Church. I, I almost lose my mind. I pinch myself every week and say, God, you're so good. I'm so glad. I don't know about you, but I believe that God has called us for such a time as this to make a difference in the kingdom right now in Huntsville, Alabama. You can't run from God. God will run after you. Oh, okay, y'all didn't get that right there. Uh, it was Kathleen Battle, that old Negro spiritual. What Kathleen Battle says, my God is so high, I can't get over him. He's so low, I can't get under him. He's so wide, I can't get around him. You must come in at the door. Can't outrun God. God will run after you no matter what you have done, no matter how many times you have sinned, no matter how many times you have broken your own heart. God will run after you. Aren't you glad today that we serve a God who does not give up on us even in our own disobedience? Now, 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 now check it. The reason why Jonah ran from his call was because, again, the Ninevites were wicked folk. Uh, Jonah did not want his enemies. They were the enemies of Israel. Jonah did not want his enemies to be saved. <laughs> wait, wait a minute. He's a prophet. He's a preacher. But he don't want to see folks saved. Which reminds me to tell somebody that everybody that preaches is not always in the spirit. 
Let me tell you something about God. God can use anybody, anywhere, anytime. If he can use a donkey, he can show enough use a preacher. Come on, somebody. Jonah don't want to see the Ninevites saved because they were his enemies. They, the, the Ninevites had, had killed folk in, in his own family. And how in the world are you going to want somebody saved and they have been so bloody, they have been lies and deceit, they have been so callous, they have been so mean. How in the world do you allow for the one who lied on you to be saved? Now, I know nobody in first church is like this, but there are some other folks, some other places that uh, you got some family members that you don't want to see in heaven. Come on, somebody. That's not here. That's somewhere else. You, I'm like, mm -mm, I don't want to see them in heaven. <laughs> Now, they were so mean on earth. And I don't want to see them up in glory, but let me tell you something about God. God is so gracious. God is so kind. He's so long-suffering. I'll preach this in a few weeks. God doesn't give us just one chance, but I celebrate a God of a second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen chance. The Ninevites were cruel people. They didn't look like the Israelites. They didn't talk like the Israelites. They didn't eat like the Israelites. They didn't have the same social economic standing as the Israelites. And Jonah believed that God should not save people who don't look like them. I got to come out the ship for a second because I got to help somebody real quick because I, 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 I left Chicago to come down to, to, Nineveh, to, to Huntsville to, to help us bougie. Did I say that for real? Did I, did I say that? I, I did. I think I did say that. Bourgeoisie, upper class, middle class, black folk understand that God is no respecter of persons. God is not respecter of what your last name is. And I don't care what your last name is. If it's only for the grace of God that we are standing here right now, you are not going to get to heaven based on your last name, based on your degree based upon what you have done. The only way we're going to get to heaven is by the blood of Jesus Christ and his righteousness. It's not because I returned tithes. It's not because I've been so good. It's not because I kept the Sabbath to a letter of the law. No, boo. It's because God's grace and his mercy. God cares about everybody. Let me tell you something, somebody. Come, come, come here right now. Let me tell you something. God cares about the one who is dirty. God cares about the one who is strung out. Where my amens at right there? Where my amens at? Where my amens at? Where my amens at? God cares about the one who wears a T-shirt and jeans to church every single Sabbath. God cares about that single mother who is working her hands to the bone, who is working two or three jobs trying to provide for her family. God cares about that father who is out there hustling, who is out there trying to make a way for his family. God cares not just about church folk, but the Bible says, for God so loved the world. God cares about folk who are in a storm right now. He cares about the homeless. He cares about those who are sick and shut in. He cares about the destitute and the prostitute. I've been places and I've been spaces where I've walked in and there was a sign on the wall that said, we don't help our community. I said, why are y'all a church? No lie, I was in the office, man. I can't tell you what church it was. I, we don't, it was for they can see it. There was one in the office and one where they could see it when the, when the folk came in for help. There was a sign on the door. We don't help. 
I said, that church needs to be shut down, closed, a lock on the door, and disband it. Call somebody because that's what the church does. We help everybody. Regardless of your skin. Now, I, I didn't say something right there. Let me say something right now. We help, but you better learn how to help yourself. Ooh, we, we help, but you better learn how to help yourself. Ain't nothing wrong with going out and getting a job. Come on, somebody. I, I got to push the text because my time is up. Watch the text right now. Um, Jonah goes 550 miles where he should have been. He done go. But now he goes down to, to, to Joppa catches a boat. And can y'all see Jonah right now? He th it, and here's what sin does. And don't say amen. Just look amen right here. Just look amen. When you sinning, you plan that bad boy out. He planned to go to Joppa. He mapped out on his uh, Android, because that's back in the Bible day, is Android. Now we're New Testament iPhone, amen. He, he planned to go 2,500 miles. And then when he got on the boat, he sat down thinking, ha, I show God. <laughs> wow, I'm good now. Thank God God stopped messing with me because I don't want to see them folks saved. And don't you know it? The moment you think you good. I want to help somebody right there. The moment you think ain't nobody seen you, ain't nobody know what you're doing, God will allow you to get all the way out in the middle of your sin. And then God will, you bad now, do your bad stuff now. You do your stuff now. The Bible says in verse 4, can I have five minutes, y'all? Verse 4, y'all still going out? Verse 4, I knew it was going to be hard today. I've been playing all week. Verse 4, the Bible says, but the Lord. Now, now, I, I, the Lord sent most times, we always say the devil did it. And some things the devil are, is like, I did that? I don't even know you like that. Why are you blaming me for everything? You've been on my side most of your life. <laughs> Y'all ain't saying that. We was dancing together last night. Now you're talking about the devil made me do it? No, you on my side. What do you do, First Church? What do you do, people of God, when you find out that it's not the devil that's doing the stuff? But it's God. There's allowing for the storm to come into your life. Because not every storm is the devil. Sometimes you got to look at what MJ said, the man in the mirror. And sometimes the man in the mirror or the woman in the mirror has done some stupid stuff. I'm going to fix it in a minute, don't you worry. And now you are reaping the consequences of your disobedience. And this is why I get so excited about God, y'all, because the Bible says that, that when Jonah is all the way out there in the middle of the sea, that God looks at Jonah from heaven and God says, I got you, boy. I got you, boy. I know that you're tired. I know that you think that, that you don't want your enemies saved. But God said, let me help you right now. God said, Poof. And the Bible says that while Jonah is on that ship, 
that a wind came out of nowhere. And when that wind came out of nowhere, verse 4, Bible says there's a mighty tempest in the sea so that the, she, the, sea, the ship was like to be broken. Let me tell you how powerful God is. God can just speak one word and things can happen. He was living life like it was golden because that's what the storms do. He was there. He was living his life thinking that he was good. But all of a sudden, the storm comes in. And all of a sudden now, the ship is about to be broken. And I got to tell somebody today, hear me today, be careful who you allow on your ship. Y'all miss what I just said right there. I'm preaching better than y'all said amen right there. The storm is, is, is making the whole ship be tossed and turned because of one man in your ship. Ladies, I got to tell you something real quick. I, I miss ministry all day. But let me tell you something. Ladies, just because you want a man don't mean that the first joker that you see is the man that God wants you to have. Because if you let somebody into your ship and it's not the right person, storms break out. Help me preach in this house, somebody. The storm broke out and everybody is affected by the storm because Jonah is inside of the boat. Everybody's about to go down because of one man. He's going to bring everybody else down. So God then, I got to stop. So God then, the Bible says, then the mariners were afraid. And the mariners called upon their lowercase g, God. Because isn't that crazy that, that when you're going through a storm, and I want you to keep these texts on the screen, when you're going through a storm, you call on somebody. Even those that don't know Jesus. Them folk will be like, Lord, help me. Bible says that the mariners were afraid and, and they cried everybody to their God. They, and they, they cast forth the waves. In other words, they were like, man, we're going down. So let me start getting stuff out the way. Because sometimes you got to get stuff out your way, get stuff out your life. Let me tell you something. Sometimes, sometimes you got to get rid of some people in your life. Not your spouse, not your spouse, not your spouse, not your spouse. Amen. Well, y'all ain't saying nothing right there because Pastor Lee gave me, gave me permission today. She was up getting on my nerves to begin with, and now he said, get rid of her. I did not say get rid of her, but I did say get rid of that bottle. Hey, I did say get rid of those blunts. I did say get rid of that music that's bringing you down. I did say get rid of stuff that you know is not meant to be in your house. In your life, he begins to throw that stuff away. He begins to throw it off the ship. And they thought that if I lighten the ship up, that somehow I'm going to be better. But let me tell you something. When God is chasing you, God will not give up on you because God wants you to be saved. So no matter what you do, it won't work. They lighten stuff up and they getting rid of stuff. And God's like, them silly folk down there, they don't know. I sent the storm because I love you. I allowed you to go through it because I needed for you to spend more time in prayer. I found out that, that sometimes we, we, we play when we should have been praying. And when, we, and, and, and when we, when it happens, God, sometimes when we spend too much time playing, God has to allow for some storms to come your way to get you down on your knees. Y'all don't know what I'm saying right now. I'm shutting this thing down, but y'all miss everything I just said. I said sometimes God will allow for the storm to come in your life, not because God doesn't love you, but because God loves you so much that he has to redirect your life. And when God redirects your life, then you will recognize, wait a minute, serving Jesus is not as bad as I thought it was. God 
midst of the storm to turn Jonah around. I was, um, I, I was in, I, I was in um, the car with my family. And we were coming back, I think, from a family reunion um, a few years ago. True story. Y'all still playing. I, I was in a family reunion. We come back. And we were coming back from, from Arkansas. We were going back to Michigan. And uh, are y'all, hear me? y'all still here? Say amen. And, and, and all of a sudden, I could see down the road. I could see dark clouds all over the place. Where we just left was sunny. Matter of fact, where we were was still sunny. I mean, it was a crazy juxtaposition between where we were and what we saw coming. I could see the dark clouds ahead. And I'm driving the van, little minivan, family unit, driving the van. And I said to myself, William, you're about to drive in the midst of a storm. And I thought to myself, should I stop? Well, if I stop, the storm's going to come all against me. Should, should I pull over or, or should I turn back? I said, if I turn back, the only thing that's going to happen is, is I'm going to get further away from my destination. Y'all missing this thing. Come here, come here, come here. So here's what I did. I pulled out my iPhone. Y'all know the greatest invention in modern day society is a cell phone. Y'all know that thing right there? And an iPhone too, amen. I pulled out my iPhone and I went to my app. I'm sorry, y'all. I went to my app and, and, I, and I pulled up my maps. And when I pulled up my maps, I could see I'm still driving. And the clouds again, more dense. And, and I felt a little drop, hit the windshield. And I pulled out my map and I went to radar. And when I went to radar, it showed me that the storm was coming in five minutes. I told my passengers, yo, y'all better hold on because I'm not going back. I'm not going to turn around. I'm not going to stand still because if I stand still, somebody else may hit me if I stand still. God, I feel your spirit in this house. Oh, I'm trying to tell somebody, don't turn back on God. Young people, don't you run from God. My brother, my sister who's going through a storm right now, don't you think for a moment that God has forsaken you. God is there every step of the way. Four minutes, three minutes, it's getting darker. One minute. The rain starts like clockwork coming down. And I looked at my, 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 my phone. And let me tell you something, true to life, an alert came in my store and said there was a lightning that struck all around you. And then the next text said, the storm will last for about six minutes. You miss your shot. The next, it's, I got a flash in my, my, my phone that said lightning just struck all around you. But the next day said the storm will only last for about six more minutes. I told y'all, yo, I'm going to keep on pushing forward. I won't go as fast. I'm not going back. I'm not going to stop. But I'm going to keep on going. Study because I got an alert that the storm will not last always. I'm here today to tell somebody that your storm will not last always. Weeping may endure for a night, but is there anybody in the house today that knows joy, 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 J-O-Y, joy comes in the morning. I kept on going, I kept on going, and all of a sudden, the storm clouds begin to dissipate. The storm clouds begin to go away. I came through a storm, and guess what? It was a light all the rest of the way. Is there somebody in the house there that knows that God will be with you? I don't care the hell that you're going through right now. Your husband may be tripping. Your wife may not see it all together. Things may be bad right now. The economy is flipped out. 
but God. How good God is. He redirected Jonah in that boat. Here's your shout. Don't miss your shout today. I've been waiting all week to shout with y'all today. Watch the text now. How good God is. The mariners cried out to their God. But Jonah is in the boat. Oh, I missed it. I missed it. Y'all, I know what y'all want to say. Amen. Because the mariners are pagan. The mariners are not churched. The mariners are not Hebrew. They don't know God like that. But the moment the storm comes, they go to the prophet that is on the run and say, Brother, why are you sleeping? Call upon your God. Isn't it crazy that the pagans got to tell the Christians to call upon your God? Why the unchurched got to tell the church what to do? Who are you, Joe? Who are you? Who are you? Jonah says, my, my name is Jonah. Who are you? I'm a Hebrew. Who do you worship? I worship the God of the land and the sea. The mirrors are like, hold up. Your God is the God of the sea? Dude, say something. I don't got time because even when the pagans tell Jonah to say something, he still don't say anything. He ain't never prayed. He ain't never said nothing. But watch this. The pagans call upon God. I'm done. We got, I kept y'all too long. Y'all know I can't stick to a time today. <laughs> Wait a minute. The pagans called upon their God. The pagans called upon God. Why have thou done this? Verse number 16. Then they feared the Lord exceedingly and offered a sacrifice unto the Lord and made vows. Wait a minute. Even though Jonah is on the run, somebody got saved even in disobedience. Even though somebody will not follow God's way somebody got saved because Jonah was on the boat still I wonder how many folk in your house could be saved how many folk in your community could be saved how many folk in Huntsville could be saved if we would just allow God to use us You can't run, but what you can do is run to the altar because this last minute I have right now is for those who are going through a storm. I need for you to meet me here right now. I don't need you to play games or look like, well, that ain't me, that's somebody else. Why y'all do that? If you know for yourself that you need some anointing right now, you need some prayer to carry you through, I need for y'all to join me. Come on, real quick, y'all. We got to go. We got to go, but I need for you to come and join me. Weeping may endure for a night, but come on, somebody. I got to have some joy. I got to have some folk who will lock hands with me. I need some folk who will, who will partner with me. Listen, 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 your storm is not as bad as you think it is. He knows, God already knows that at a certain time, he's going to bring you out. At a certain time, your weeping is going to turn to shouting. At a certain time, your tears are going to turn to laughter. Y'all hear what I just said? Oh, I feel you, Jesus. At a certain time, all that stuff you've gone through, it's been making you better. Even in your disobedience, God does not love you less. But he loves you so much that he allows for storms to come your way. He allows for the storms. So if he walked out, so what? If she walked out, peace. You crying over spilled milk. Sometimes let the milk spill. 
You lost your job. I know you lost your job. So has another 2,000, 5,000 folk lost their job. It's not because you're so smart. God will give you another job. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying right now? God knows how to give you better pay. Come on, somebody. Wait a minute, Joe. God knows how to give you double for all the stuff that you've gone through. So don't you give up on God in the midst of your storm. Learn how to pray in your storm. Learn how to fast in your storm. Learn how to call upon the name of Jesus in your storm. And maybe, just maybe, God will use, this is, so, this is so powerful, maybe God will use your trial for somebody else's testimony. Everything you go through is not for you. God knew that them shipmaster and them captains and them folk on the ship were going to be on that ship. So God says, I'm going to even use your stupidity, Jonah, to save this ship. Because sometimes God can trust you. You went through it. And now, watch me right now. I kept y'all way too, but watch me right now. Watch me, watch me. You went through it, and now God said, share what you've gone through. Now, now, I'm in the ship now. Now, don't wait. Don't wait to give the total testimony. Because I know us, we, we want to the, give the whole, I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply staying within, sinking to rise no more. No, tell them I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply staying within, sinking to rise no more. And I'm still there. I'm still struggling. I'm still not there. But I've got enough faith to know that the master of the sea, come on, y'all, I'm sorry, I feel good, heard my despairing cry. And from the waters, from the waters, from the waters, from the waters, from the sea, from the struggle, from the hell, from the heartache, from the death, he lifted me. He lifted me. Now safe am I. I'm better. So much better. Because I went through it. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus, Father, we thank you right now. We thank you, God, for every storm. We thank you for every trial. We thank you, Father, right now that a whole lot of us right now are in the midst of a storm. And God, the truth is, we don't know what you're doing. God, some of us, we know for a fact, we have not brought this storm upon ourselves. We've been obedient. We've, we've been faithful as best as we know how. But God, you still haven't made a way yet. And God, I'm praying right now in the name of Jesus for that person that they will recognize, God, that we ought not give up in well-doing, but in due season we will reap if we faint not. So, God, help them to hold on. Lord, that, that, that person right now that knows good and well, they ought to break that thing off because they know, God, that the reason they are in their storm is because of their own choices. Lord, thank you for loving us so much that you're a sinner win. Caught a sermon entitled, Help, I'm in a storm, to bring us back to our right minds to say, God, I give it to you right now, God. I give you my sin. I give you my struggle. I give you my hang-ups. I give it all to you, God, right now. And I pray, God, that you would exchange our sin for your righteousness. Exchange our struggle 
for the Savior. And I pray, oh God, right now that the rest of our days we'll trust you. And God, we'll know that even though weeping and storms may endure for a night, that surely, God, the storm is passing over. Hallelujah. It's passing over, God, right now by faith in Jesus' name. Let all those that believe say amen, amen, and amen. The storm is passing over. Hallelujah. Go back to your seat. I got two minutes real quick.